Shalom, last week in uh, Parshat Bo, we had uh, a mitzvah that's the first time mentioned in the Torah, which is the orientation of the Jewish calendar by the moon. You could orient your calendar by the sun, as most cultures do, but the Jewish ritual calendar is lunar. Uh, so we have every month Rosh Chodesh, and the place in where that manifests itself is in the chapter 12 of Exodus. Uh, you know that the Jewish calendar year is 354 days, which is the lunar year, and that's why we intercalate the calendar by adding a leap month seven times in 19 years. In any case, um, so first of all, just think about that for a minute, that our calendar is oriented by the moon. And the commentary said one of the reasons is because, well, a week astronomically is simply a quarter moon, and when you, uh, you can observe a month over uh, a, a month in the sky, look at the moon for a month, and you can see that it waxes and wanes. It gets full, then it disappears. It gets to be a quarter moon, a sliver moon. And uh, one of the classic commentaries says it's like the what happens to the Jewish people, what happens to a person uh, that you see that things wax and wane, that even at your low point you know you're going to come back full, you should have hope and optimism. And every time you look at the moon, you can feel that. Now, of course, uh, the sun is the major luminary, and uh, in the Genesis story of creation, that God created the sun and the moon. Uh, and it's interesting that there's one phenomenon in Judaism that occurs only every 28 years. It's not that well known, and a person in their lifetime only experiences it a couple of times. For me, for example, the last time I was a junior in rabbinical school, 1981, and then the time before that I was negative three years old, and the next time, God willing, if I live that long, I'll be 81. So you can kind of mark your life by those 28-year increments, and it happens to be that this year in 2009, it falls. And not only on, in 2009, but it falls on April 8th, which this year is era of Passover, which rarely happens. And therefore, if you check this out online, Birkat HaChama, you'll see that some Jews think the Messiah is coming. Now, what is Birkat HaChama? Well, there's a liturgy for it, and there's a bracha to say. So April 8th in the morning, Jews will gather, and uh, you can't really look at the sun, but you you know look up at the sun, and then you, there's liturgy with uh, hymns and psalms, and then the bracha ma'aseb reshit, God who made the creation. Um, and the reason why, according to tradition, is that uh, if for those who are believers that the earth was actually, that every one day of creation was one day, which I don't believe, but, you know, fanatics do, uh, they would say that the sun, the moon, and the stars were aligned the same way on the creation day as they are every 28 years on this particular day. In any case, it's an opportunity, really, to reflect about, first of all, what it means to live in a world with a sun. You can't live without it. The sun is something that's constant. It doesn't feel like it ever changes. Of course, it'll burn out probably in 10 billion years or so, but we'll worry about it then. In the meantime, it gives us vitamin D and gives us uh, sunlight. It makes uh, warmth. It give, makes the whole world possible. It's the critical ingredient, one of the critical ingredients to survival. Without it, survival is impossible uh, on Earth. Um, but even more importantly, just as the moon gives you an opportunity to reflect on a monthly basis about the cycles of life, the sun gives you an opportunity to reflect about the miracle of creation, about the continuity of life, about measuring your own life in 28-year cycles. Like I said to the congregation this past Shabbat, you know, for, uh, I know that uh, I ask people how many people know somebody who's lost a job or worried about losing a job, have, uh, have concerns about family, about health. Everybody raised their hand for one of those questions. And then when you think about it, and I pointed to older people who survived the Depression who are alive, and, and uh, when you think about things in 28-year cycles, it gives you a different kind of sense of balance and an and ability to surmount difficulties um, when then you just look at it on a short-term basis. And so I think there's uh, certainly an important homiletical point to be made in the contrast between the mitzvah of the new moon, which was mentioned in Parshat Bo, and the juxtaposition with the sun, phenomenon that occurs only every 20 years. It happens to be this year in 2009. And so the moon, the sun, and the glory of God. Shalom. I think uh, to make the important point that, of course, in the context of the Exodus, where the Egyptians were worshiping the sun as, uh, as God, Ra, and to know that the Judaism said, no, the sun is not God, the moon is not God, God created those things. One of the key ideas that God created all.